What motivates me is, is just going for the win, period. It's like the one thing that like, I can't find elsewhere to give me that itch or that, that drive is, is trying to win a race. I'm Eli Tomac, and I'm from Cortez, Colorado. When I was a kid, you know, we would watch uh, Supercross on the television, and, and that was my dream, was to, to be one of those guys. Pretty crazy to be, to be living that dream. So I got my first bike, uh, it was Christmas, I think I was four years old, uh, PW50, and that's where it all started. You guys, first motorbike, woo -hoo! Five years old, Christmas morning, December 25th, 1997, on his Yamaha, there he goes, woo! Uh, my first race was actually in, in Mancus. That's just 45 minutes up the road from, uh, from where, where our ranch is at here. Yeah, when you're up here, it's like epic. Uh, I call this place the ranch. Uh, this is my dad's property. Growing up on a ranch is, it's different, but I, I wouldn't trade it for anything. I mean, you can go out and basically do whatever you want to do. So you're building dirt jumps with your buddies, you're driving RC cars, riding your dirt bikes. Whatever it may be, it's like, it's just you go, out, you go out your back door and you just go do it. So this track right here, it's a little bit covered in weeds, but this is where we had our very first track on the farm. We have two supercross tracks and then the motocross tracks. It's our training grounds. It's, it's where I spend nine and a half months of the year. Yeah. So should we just do like half and half kind of thing? We could, yeah. I'd, I'd like to, like, especially like a turn like this, and you come down and landing, I'd like to see if we could just pick that throttle up as early as we can. So my dad has a professional mountain bike background. Yeah, I started as a BMXer from age seven to about 17, and then transitioned over into uh, professional mountain biking. Uh, so two wheels were always in our blood. Mountain biking was brand new in the mid-80s, and I got into mountain biking. There was nothing as far as any type of guidance or coaching, or um, I was just using some road cycling training techniques that I just learned some with some coaching and some on my own. You know, he made his living, you know, on two wheels, on, on the bicycle. So um, in, in that sense, I, I think that really helped me as a racer and as a rider. He has a good eye. He, he's watched me enough now. Like he he knows, you know, when I'm when I miss something or what I need to work on that way, and and I trust his word for it. That's a huge thing. Is is can you trust the guy that's that's training you, right? My role with Eli's career right now, and, and it always really has been, is really just guiding him. Uh, he's, he's out on the practice track with me. My background, a lot of times I did a lot of my training on my own, so I, I preferred to be a little more private with my training, and then I kind of carried that over to Eli, and it was a little bit old school in that the guys kind of used to be that way. He's doing my contracts for me and his scheduling and really is, is business arrangements too, because I, uh, in my sport I did a lot of my management for 15 years, so for me it was a natural transition for me to help him with his. Who do we got pulling up over there? The general. Watch out. So he's my agent, he's my trainer, and he's my dad. Like a lot of times I have to 
you know, back off a little bit and give them the space. Because there's a family dynamic there also, it's not just, um, okay, I'm your manager, but I'm also his father, so it's, that's something I had to be careful with. So he's, he's a little bit of everything. <laughs>felt like because I was an athlete for 15 years I had a perspective of okay how hard is this on you like completely on you like mentally physically everything and I, I kind of used that knowledge of the things that I had been through and applied it to what Eli has going on when he got to a certain level, I'm like, okay, this guy's good enough to do this. We're gonna lay it out. And, and then it's up to them, really, you know. Here we go. Oh, I almost full shot. I think you got it. So I turned pro when I was 17. And that was 2010. The thing about being a professional athlete is you have to perform if you, if you wanna, you know, make a good living at it, so. Um, I realized that from a very young age, you know, when I was 17, I'm like, okay, this is what I'm going to do. Yeah, our sport is, you go pro at a very, very young age, and it, it's, uh, it's hard, it's hard, it, and it takes years to, to like build your base. He had a really pretty, I'd say pretty steady progression through his amateur career. He didn't just barnstorm Loretta's from 50 cc's all the way through. You know, he, he slowly built and became better and better and better. Motocross has been, I mean, it's been everything for, for my life. It's taken me around the United States. It's taken me overseas. So in that sense, it's, it's like irreplaceable. Being outside, doing something you love, riding your bike, like that's what's so cool about it all is, is, is that is my, that's my job. The low point is, is actually being away from home. It's like, you're on the road all the time. It's 30 weekends a year. Well, when I'm not racing, it's, I mean, my life has changed a lot with the little ones. So having kids is awesome. Uh, we have two now, a baby boy and a baby girl. So we've got it all going on right now. Will the little ones get motorcycles? We'll probably get them. It's a great family sport just as a whole, like I, I look back and I, I can imagine being in my parents' shoes, like just having the whole family, it's a great family event. I, I hope they like riding bikes. We got Tyler, we got Eli. We are in July 1998, we got two five-year-olds ready to race. They're ready. What kind of bike you got here, E? What is this? Yamaha. Yamaha? What size is it? What is it, Papa? PW50. PW50. Cool. The 2022 season, it's going to be a whole new look for Eli. I've got a, a new motorcycle. I'm on uh, a Yamaha now, so that's that's a big deal for, for us. That's why it was tough. Like it, New track, new bike. It was kind of a uh, butt pucker. <laughs> the first session. <laughs> it's like, I haven't ridden a Supercross track in six months. Oh my God, and now I'm on a new bike. I really do feel like it's going to be a good situation for me, so, um, and, and give me uh, a good opportunity to try to win races. So, next season will be my 12th season of racing. I still love doing it. You know, I don't know exactly how long it's going to be, whether it's a year, only a year of racing or two. I don't know that, that day yet, you know, when I'm going to say, hey, I'm done. With Eli, I'm like, don't ever say you're going to retire at the end of this year or that year. I was like, you're going to know when you've had enough and when you're done. And I'm like, when, you're, when your motivation is gone to race and to win, then you know that the time is getting close. Uh, one thing I have told myself is as long as I can win a race and be like in the hunt for that win, 
you know, are battling for the lead. But the day I lose that, I feel like, hey, maybe now it's time to, to let it go, you know? So for goals, I, I'm really close to like checking all the goals off, but the problem with like racing is that you get just addicted to like going after the checkered flag and winning. So that's kind of like a never ending thing you, you want as a racer. So big picture wise, I, I've kind of checked everything off, off the box, but the chase of winning races never really goes away. So that's what I, that's why I'm still here and why I still like to do it.